Valentine's Day, a special holiday where individuals express their love, happiness, and joy with their significant other, in a day where there will be intercourse and sex. They are also death and misery, and not only a holiday like this can you escape the harsh realities of real life. In this video, you will be shown 5 real events that happen during Valentine's Day. Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Murder of Jodine Siren. On Valentine's Day 2007, Art and Louis Siren went to visit the 39-year-old daughter, Jodine, at her condo. Despite being able to live independently, she was even physically disabled. Her parents continued to pay bi-weekly visits to check up on her. When her parents arrived, they noted that the front doors were turned on, but yet the front door was still latched. After a couple knocked on the door went unanswered, the father broke down the door and entered Jodine's darkly lit bedroom. Jodine and another man were having sex in the bedroom. The father off guard. After telling the man to dress and depart, the parents waited outside the bedroom. After this, after some time, Jodine did not appear to welcome her parents. Parents returned to the bedroom and discovered a dreadful sight. Jodine's lifeless body is now in front of them, strangled and beaten. The man who was discovered was brazen enough to murder Jodine as her parents were outside the bedroom. During the struggle, she did not make a sound to notify her parents, and her killer was able to sneak out of the back window of her bedroom instantly. Her parents even walked on her daughter being raped and didn't even realize it. Although DNA samples have been discovered from the crime scene, her killer has yet to be identified or captured. Liz Colesman and Stephanie Hart, the Subway Shop Murders. On April 20th, 1919, there was a mass shooting at Columbine High School in Colorado that took 13 victims plus two more students. And months later, Nicholas Colesman, teen, and Stephanie Hart, 16, both sophomores at that high school. Nicholas worked at a subway near the school. Shortly after 1 a.m., another employee drove past the subway and noticed that some of the lights were left on, despite it being way past closing. When the employee went inside to find out what was going on, she saw Nicholas and Stephanie shot to death behind the counter and Nicholas was working a night shift that night by himself. I believe this because no other employees were present alongside Nicholas at the time. Besides Stephanie who was only visiting Subway to check in on her boyfriend, they were both ambushed at some point. They were most likely tied up and restrained. The only lead officers have is only the mystery killer was spotted wearing a red jacket walking away moments after the bodies were discovered. Nothing appeared to be stolen. Thus. The allegation that this was a drug related killing because Subway was spotted near some drug related areas. But that issue has not been confirmed as the cause behind these deaths. It could be a result of terrible circumstances such as being in the wrong place at the wrong time. After 16 years, officials still haven't determined who murdered Nicholas and Stephanie Hart. Stardust Nightclub Disaster on the night of the sad tragedy, February 14, 1981, there were 841 patrons at this disco party. 48 people killed and another 200 were injured on the 14th of February. Shortly after midnight, a fire broke out on the building top of the roof. While the music was playing, no one saw the fire overtaking the structure until the roof materials began to melt and bits fell on top of people's heads. Panic began to set in for the people within the building, so they started to rush towards the nearest emergency exits, only to be blocked by huge obstacles in their path, people trampling over each other, and even windows were sealed off for unexplained reasons. Then the first responders arrived, several individuals have already died as a result of smoke and fire. This building was for a nightclub atmosphere where partygoers and every night during Valentine's Day where partygoers lost their lives. Here is a video explaining in more detail. Of Valentine's Day 1981, 48 young people were killed and more than 200 injured when a fire ripped through the Stardust nightclub in Artain. Pat Dunn lost her 21-year-old brother. Bro the aftermath found that the probable cause was arson that hugely angered the survivors, which saw it as a form of victim blaming. It wasn't until 2009 that a new report found there was no evidence for arson. Then, in 2019, 
The Irish government ordered a new inquest to be held into the 48 deaths, but that still hasn't started. When YouTube was born, we may never think about it again, but on February 14, 2005, and forgive me if I mispronounce these names, Chad Hurley, Steve Chin, Gerard Karim developed YouTube with their first headquarters in San Mateo, California. The website went live on February 14th, and 15 years later, more than 400 hours of information is added to the site per hour. Think about how much YouTube influenced our lives in terms of content, news, and so on. It's something you don't really usually think about but it's something i wanted to include into this segment so there you go youtube was developed on valentine's day the murders of jesse mcbain and patricia main On Valentine's Day evening in 1971, a young couple, Jesse McBain, 19 years old, and Patricia Main, 20 years old, went for a lengthy walk. After enjoying a late night partying session, these university students, on a couple's night where love and affection is shown, someone with horrible intentions can turn any day into a house of nightmares. This is 1971 and this is the final walk these two will ever take together. Jesse and Patricia were both students at North Carolina State University. Patricia was studying as a nurse at the time and was regarded as quiet but family oriented, while Jesse was intelligent and also had a humorous side sense of humor. This was Valentine's Day and they had a dance at their local hospital at the night of the murder, which makes sense given Patricia's profession as a nurse. After a while, they decided to leave the celebration and go along a lover's lane route. That was the last time either of them was reported to be alive. 13 days later, after they entered the woodland area in Durham, Orange County, North Carolina, their remains were discovered. The young couple was tied up and strangled to death. According to records, the killer or killers tightened and loosened the rope multiple times in order to prolong the killing. Years later, after these murders, the suspects have been caught and at the time of recording, if they are still alive now, they will be 53 years old.